Well, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Becky Crafter Van Build, or should I say the Crafty Becky Van Build. <laughs> Nevertheless, today's video I'm going to talk about batteries or securing your batteries because I see in so many van builds people just put their batteries in a little tiny box, wire them up and that's pretty much it, they forget about them. must remember that these batteries, especially AGM batteries, are really heavy. I mean these ones, if I can pick one up, look at the weight of that. As you can see, they're really heavy. These weigh a whacking 31.7 kilos and there's two of these. That's over 60, well almost 64 kilos. So you can imagine if you have a, if you are unfortunate enough to have an accident in your van, they are going to become a projectile and they are going to smash through anything in their path. So it's very important to strap them down, tie them down, bolt them down, whatever you do, make sure they're not going anywhere when you have an accident. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to drill some holes in the floor. I'm going to be fitting these tie downs to make these batteries well and truly secure to the van. So if Becky is unfortunate enough to have a little mishap, they're going to hopefully stay where they should stay and not end up in her lap. Now each of these batteries is 130 amp hour, that gives us 260 amp hours of power, which is plenty for what Becky needs. Now to keep these batteries topped up in tip top condition, we've got a CTEC charge controller, this is a smart charge controller, it's going to take power from the alternator and charge the batteries, not only that, this also can control solar panels, so we will be fitting solar panels on this roof as well. And just in case, for good measure, we've also got a MPPT solar charge controller, can't decide which one of these to fit at this moment in time, I'm sure as time progresses we will decide on which one of these solar controllers to fit and to use but for the time being to keep the batteries charged up we're going to be using this CTEC charge controller because this van has got a smart alternator so we do need to use this. The question that comes up quite often and that is how do you tell if you've got a smart alternator fitted to your van and it's really quite simple how to tell and I made a whole video about this I'll put a link in up here at the end of this video to that video where I show and speak about smart alternators but for the purpose of this video I'll just quickly show you exactly what I mean how simple it is to tell and how simple it is to identify whether you have a smart alternator fit it to your van. Take a look at the top of the battery, it really is quite shockingly simple. <laughs> so this is the negative terminal here, if you've got an extra little wire like this and a black box on your negative terminal, the chances are you've got a smart alternator. If you haven't got any of this, then you haven't got a smart alternator. It really is quite as simple as that. Just look at your negative terminal on your battery and if you've got that little black box with the extra couple of wires coming out and you've definitely got a smart alternator. Now to feed all the power from the alternator to these batteries and keep them charging up I'm going to be using 16mm multi-core automotive cable. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty and all the specifications of everything because that makes a pretty boring video but I will put a link in the description of this video to all the products so anyone's interested they can look them up and see all the specifications for themselves. Now to look after our batteries and make sure we keep them in good health I highly recommend getting a battery monitor because this battery monitor will tell Becky how much power is coming out of her batteries, how much power is going into her batteries and the state of charge of her batteries because the last thing she wants to do is run these batteries down so low that it pretty much destroys them and makes them yeah, unusable because if you drain the batteries too low it really does shorten the life of your batteries. So um, yeah, very important to get a battery monitor if, you're, if you've got such expensive batteries. The last thing you want to do is ruin them. <laughs> so that's it. I'm going to start installing these batteries now. Like I said at the beginning of this video, the most important thing is to strap them down and make sure they're not going to move anywhere whilst the vehicle is in motion. 
So once I've installed the batteries, I need to think about feeding all the gadgets that are going to be in this van. Things like the fridge and the lights, etc. And the power sockets, USB sockets, 12 volt sockets, so Becky can charge her laptop. Yeah, and all that good stuff. And to do that, I'm going to use a bank of fuses. So this basically is the equivalent of what you would have in your house as a consumer unit. It's the main fuse board. The main power cable from the battery will go into the bottom one and the neutral buzz bars are at the top. So this neutral will come off of here and go to the bodywork of the van which becomes our, our ground or our neutral. And all these rows and down here then spur off to all our appliances, our fridge, our lights, our sockets all come off of all this and the water pump stuff like that um, yeah the fan it all branches off of this one complete unit so we basically have one power feed going in and it branches off and goes off to all its other appliances so it's real neat I mean these things make wiring out a van really simple really simple to use and the little row of lights down the middle here if the fuse that goes in here does blow the light comes on to let you know which fuse has gone Brilliant, I'll put a link to these as well. <laughs> and to control all the lights, the ceiling fan, the fridge and all that good stuff, we've got a bank of switches as well. And we've also got a voltmeter. So not only has Becky got her battery monitor to monitor the state of her battery, she's got a quick little reference there. She can keep an eye on her voltage in her leisure batteries. And it's all in one unit and it's all wired up. It's really simple stuff. So the main thing I want to do today is bolt these batteries down and try and get some wiring done as well before it starts to rain. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm not going to film myself drilling holes in the van and bolting it all down, but I'll be right back and I'll show you exactly what I've done. So before I put the batteries in place, I'll just quickly show you the tie downs that I've bolted through the floor of this van. They are actually bolted right through to the floor of the van. Here we go. I'll show you where they are. So there you go, these are the tie downs I was talking about and you can see they're bolted right through and that's how they should be. You really do need to make sure your batteries are secured in an appropriate manner to stop them moving around in the event of a, a mishap. I won't say the word accident because nobody wants to jinx anyone. Now something else you need to consider is when drilling holes in your van, especially the bottom of your van, is where those holes are going to come through. I mean the last thing you want to do is drill straight into your fuel tank or your exhaust pipe or fuel lines or even brake lines. So please do always check before you drill down into the floor of your van where those bolts are going to actually come through. And in this particular case, I was really lucky. There was no um, obstructions in the way. It was a nice big clean area. And those bolts, the other side of the bolts, I put big spacers, big washers to take the weight of the batteries. If they do try and shift, it's going to spread the weight of those batteries. I'll take you underneath the van and show you exactly what I mean. So here we are underneath Becky's van. And if I show you up here, you can see the washers I've used. They're the bolts and the washers, and those washers are nice and big, and they spread the load of any um, weight of those batteries if they do try and move. It will stop those bolts pulling through the floor in the event of a nasty mishap. It just adds that extra safety to it. So there you go. That's how you should have your battery secured to your van. And if you've already bought a van, then please do make sure your batteries are secured in place in a similar manner. Um, you can never be too sure. Right, let's get the batteries in place and then I'll show you how the ratchet strap works. So before I box the batteries in, I'll show you what they look like when they're strapped in. As you can see, that one strap is definitely gonna hold these batteries in place. I've got some battens around the outside edge as well. So there's no way these batteries are gonna be moving anywhere. And once I have boxed it in, I'm gonna put a front across there, a false lid on top there. If Bex does need to remove these batteries for any reason, all she's got to do is undo this ratchet strap and simply lift them up out of the box. They've got handles on, so they can be easily removed. It's really simple, it's really safe. I always say that, keep it simple and keep it safe. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video entertaining and mildly informative, and I'll see you next time. ta for now. I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritty of, um, and that's, now each of these batteries is 130 amp hour, that gives us a hundred, no it doesn't, <laughs> and these weigh 31.7 kilos, oh no it does that, <laughs> you have to tap it and it comes back on again, <laughs> right?
Bueno, 